Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of In-Depth Angling. Got an exciting episode here for you today. We're going to be covering the actual spawning of crappie on Lake of the Ozarks in this video. I'm really excited to do this one with you. If you guys happen to not be subscribed yet and you don't want to miss more content like this, we do other ones over pre-spawn, post-spawn, bass videos like this. We're going to be doing some over the catfish, white bass, walleye, etc. All those kind of different runs that these fish do on Lake of the Ozarks. So if you don't want to miss any of that kind of content, go down below and subscribe and hit a thumbs up if you like these kind of videos. I'm going to cover over a cove that I covered in the pre-spawn crappie fishing video. If you want to catch that, I'll leave a card up there for you to watch. But um, we're going to go over Lynn Creek Cove and we'll kind of highlight this cove here, but this is the one I went over before and kind of showed you guys some areas. Understanding where they're coming from is always the best place to start in that they're going to be coming off these little secondary points and, and little drop offs and things like that. And they'll be moving back here to spawn. And now we're back here and we're spawning and the water temperature needs to be around 55 to 65 degrees for crappie to spawn. And that's not just like the Ozarks, that's everywhere. And with that being said, look for the northern shorelines to be warming up first um, and kind of more of like the muddy water areas or where there's creeks involved and stuff. So like if there's a creek at the back of here or the back of this little cove or over here, the runoff of the warm rainwater from the spring can kind of heat that water up a little bit faster and get those fish up there actually spawning sooner. Crappie are attracted to woody cover no matter what time of year it is, but in the spring they're attracted to woody cover along with a combination of pea gravel because crappie need pea gravel to be able to spawn. It keeps eggs really nice and clean so there's not like a big muddy silty bottom because if they get a bunch of silt on the eggs they kind of get shaded out and they die. If they have a very stained or very heavily muddy water lake at the time when they're spawning they'll spawn shallower because they need the sunlight to keep the eggs alive so keep that in mind this time of year crappie are very easy to catch so you can go to the back of any of these pockets in here back behind these docks if there's some pea gravel there's some brush they could be up underneath the docks themselves if they're shallow enough they'll spawn under them and you can really catch them off the bank you don't need a boat you don't need a bunch of fancy equipment you can catch them with jigs or minnows a variety of stuff they're very aggressive this time of year they're defending their nests they're really feeding they're as aggressive as crappie get they're going to be in the springtime during a spawning cycle I'll move back over here to Possum Hollow for some other examples, but you're just going to be kind of looking if you're going on Navionics trying to find like, hey, where's a good spawning location for these fish? I'm going to be looking at where there's some creek beds or some old channels over here. I'll zoom in on this real quick for you. There's an old creek bed in here and it goes right back over here to this big flat area and I bet you there's a lot of pea gravel there. If there's like a tree that fell in the water back here or somebody put a brush pile in there, even better. The fish are going to kind of congregate around that. It's better if there's some cover around the area where there's pea gravel because then once the eggs hatch, those little fry will end up going into that cover for shelter. They, they like the cover around there, pea gravel banks, you know, some sort of shade, docks. Really, you're looking for brush piles, lay downs, things of that nature to find these fish. And like I said earlier, if there's a dirtier section of the lake, like let's say that the Niangua River up here had a big rainstorm and it went along the south of the lake and all this runoff was coming through here and it made this arm of the lake very dirty, they're going to be spawning a lot shallower than let's say down here where the clearer section of the lake typically is, is down by the dam further away from all the major rivers where that sediment has a chance to settle down in the water. So these fish back here can spawn a lot deeper in these coves and uh, when I say a lot deeper, I mean like by a few feet. If they have a couple foot of visibility on the Niangua, uh, those fish will have to spawn a little bit shallower than what these would if they have like five or six foot of visibility down here. And you know, we're going back here to the back of the shallow cove here and there's a bunch of docks and stuff. They might be all the way up underneath some of these slips and things over here to spawn if there's some pea gravel there as opposed to like, let's say if it was muddy, they might have to be like all the way over here on the shallow end where it's only a couple feet deep to do so. So that's kind of a, a thing to keep in mind just with the, the color of the water and what the depth that they're actually going to be holding to. But really they're going to be within around 10 foot of the bank no matter where you go on typical year in a typical situation. Not all the crappie are going to spawn 
at the same time. Covered that in the last video as well. Down here towards the end of the lake, it takes the longest to heat up because it's the deepest. If you're up here by where the glaze arm is, or up here by Truman, or up here towards the ends of these river arms anywhere on the lake, and there's like creeks nearby or something where a lot of runoff comes in, they're going to be almost done spawning, if not into post-spawn, by the time that the dam will actually just be getting to start spawning. So kind of experiment with different areas of the lake, and you can follow the spawn throughout the lake and kind of follow it down towards the dam as the season goes on. These crappie this time of year are very easy to catch on jigs. You can cover a lot more water with them if you're just fan casting along the bank. Minnows work too, and it's a great time of year for kids to get involved into fishing. It's a simple kind of thing a lot of people uh, really enjoy. If you're just getting into fishing, this can be a very good learning opportunity for you where you can build some confidence up in what you're doing because the fish are shallow and it's easy to locate them. You don't have to have a bunch of equipment to do this. And so if you're just getting into it, I recommend doing this. If you have kids, I recommend doing this. This is a very good time to go out and catch some fish with them. It's really a pretty simple kind of bite to get into. It's nothing too crazy. Find shallow areas with pea gravel and some wood and you fish some jigs and minnows around there and you kind of move around area to area to see where they're at because they might not be all staged up in one cove or somebody might have went in there and caught them the day before. That's really all you got to be kind of looking around for though is those sort of areas because they will be there. There'll be still be some fish pre-spawn mode everywhere you know or post-spawn. They'll still be out here along these channels along where the points are and things. There's still going to be a few there. God made it that way so that fish would have a chance to spawn at different times and it's going to increase their survival rate. If they all spawned at the same time and then the lake ended up having like a major cold front th come through in the spring and like everything was getting flooded out and those, those eggs got too deep into the water and everything was really cold and muddy and the water temperature got too cold or it got so muddy that the eggs kind of got shaded out or something and died. Uh, that they wouldn't all be up there at the same time and then you wouldn't have anything be able to live and the species would kind of suffer from that. But it's not a one-size-fits-all for fishing. We're going to show you guys some jigs that I like to use when I'm out doing this kind of stuff. I like to use more of a chartreuse to a heavy stain to muddy water and a glow color. This is uh, Mid-South that makes these, Mid-South Tackle, and they're based out of Arkansas. I'm not partnered with them or sponsored by them or anything like that. I just like their jigs that they make. They're pretty tough. You can reuse them all the time. This is what I use 90% of the time when I'm crappie fishing. I'll use chartreuse most of the time in this lake because it's staying too muddy most of the time. Or if I'm down by the dam where we have like some clear water, you can barely even see this one here, but this is Pearl Glow and it's like a bright white and it goes very well or like these uh, silver ones do very well imitating kind of like a shad minnow or something like that. Uh, blue and white's a good color for those kind of clear, clear stained, which means kind of more of like a three to four foot visibility uh, and up. I like to use the whites and silvers, and if it's anything less than that, I like to use chartreuse. You can use different combinations of that. You can fish them vertical, you can cast them. You fish them under a bobber, they work great. You can use these as casting as well. These little slider crappie jigs are like little swim baits. They're maybe like an inch and a half to two inches long, depending on what size you're going to get. Uh, you could basically use the same kind of colors. I don't get too crazy with it. You could buy all of these and stuff and say, oh, they're hitting on this color one day or this color the next day. Chartreuse is a good color. It cuts through the water really well and it's highly visible in muddy water situations. They will eat that all the time. Pearl's a really good one for clear water. If you have those two colors for crappie fishing in your box, if, you're, if that's all you have, that'll work for you. You don't have to go into a crazy amount of getting baits and stuff to catch crappie. You can use these. I like to use these for vertical fishing. They have this very, very sensitive tail, these Bobby Garland uh, little baby shad. They're about two inches long. Sometimes they make them into even a little bit smaller. Um, they make a little swim bait here with it too, just like a little kicker on it. They're good to use as well. But you don't have to get a whole bunch of jigs. You don't have to get a whole bunch of fancy equipment or spidering or anything like that to get, go and catch crappie this time of year. They get up on the banks, they get into the laydowns on the banks, just look for the pea gravel, the wood cover, fan cast around. I like to reel my jigs in pretty slow and steady. Crappie slider swim baits, if I'm using those, I would like to move them as fast as the tail will barely kick and they're not hitting into the bottom. And so that's about the perfect speed. <laughs> To, to really be re reeling those most days. Sometimes they'll hit it when you're really kind of running it in, but not all the time and not all the fish are going to be in that aggressive of a mood. Sometimes you you know you can go through an area to 
you're in a boat or something or you're really trying to figure out where the fish are, you can go through an area pretty quick with these and just kind of fan cast until you catch one, then go back through and maybe fish a little bit slower with a tube jig or with one of these if you got a, a boat and you're vertically fishing. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And I really want you guys to go out there and catch some fish this time of year. It's a great time to go out in there and catch some. This is a very good lake for crappie fishing. There's a lot of eater-sized crappie in here. They're very good to eat. Good for kids, good for people getting into fishing. So if you like this, we got another one coming out for post-spawn crappie. It's a little bit more complicated to catch them in the post-spawn, but I'll go over how you guys catch them during that period as well and what you guys need to be doing to be successful out there in the water. Thank you guys for watching today's video so much. Consider subscribing if you have not yet done so, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.